<laughs> Jeez. All right. So, um, welcome to week six, day two. We got the homebrew fruit snack, Junior. DJ Fruit Snack. <laughs> um, yeah, and so uh, we're kind of going to continue from our last class on gangster rap. You want to get down? Can you say, don't do crack? Don't do crack. <laughs> don't do drugs. Do crack, Jar <laughs> do, do crack, Jar Jar. Um, but anyways, in today's uh, <laughs> unit, we are going to um, watch a film called Planet Rock. Um, and referring to rock cocaine, the story of hip-hop in the crack generation narrated by Ice-T. Okay, so I got some previewing questions for y'all. Um, you know, you should have watched the Jay-Z short, which is kind of a nice piece that looks on the epic fail of the war on drugs, which is a major part of this narrative here. Um, so I want you to kind of like think about these things as you watch the film. Are you going to watch the film, Alfie? Yes. Can you tell everybody what noise a dinosaur makes? Uh. Whoa! What about a nice dinosaur? Uh. Whoa! Okay, so think about these things as you watch the film. Hey. Think about these things as you watch the film. Here, get down, brother. As you watch the film. Yeah? Uh, why would early hip-hop MCs... Hey, no, dude, no. Come here. Alfie, come on. Just stand right here. Good job. Okay, why would early hip-hop MCs accept, embrace, and envy the powder cocaine culture? Um, I mean, just think about, you know, you back to our first early units, you know, talking about, you know, people coming from, from nothing and the, and the, the, the socioeconomic conditions um, in the United States and a lot of urban America and the negative impact on black and brown people here, okay? Um, your head's on my mic, man. Mic check one, two. Get your head off my mic, brother. Alfie, please, no thank you. Come here, sit down or go play with the kitties. Go play with the kitties. Okay. Oh, get the chick. <laughs> Okay, um, so just think about that, you know, why was there a gravitation towards that sort of culture and, uh, um, and, and rap music? Good job, dude. Um, yo, think about Tony Montana. They go into the Scarface character, Tony Montana. Why would he kind of become like a central figure in, um, you know, hip-hop culture in so many ways and appeal? Why would that story appeal to so many artists and that film, you know, go on to, you know, influence people. I mean, you can think specifically of Scarface, uh, you know, the rapper from the Ghetto Boys. Um, think about legislation and police law mentality uh, regarding uh, crack, you know, rock cocaine. Um, how does it highlight institutional racism? And I mean, I, we're going to see the whole range of it here from uh, legislation to uh, uh, enforcement of legislation and let's just say selective enforcement of, le of legislation. I mean, all data says that proportionately, you know, white people use uh, crack, crack, uh, cocaine, uh, drugs in general at a disproportionately higher level um, than, um, you know, black and brown people here in the United States. But black and brown people are selectively those laws are selectively enforced against them. Um, they are tried and convicted at a much higher rate um, than, than white people, okay? So think about how the whole system, specifically as it relates to, um, you know, um, drugs and the war on drugs, how, how you take something that is, you know, addiction, um, mental health, uh, et cetera, and you turn it into, you know, something that's about, you know, that and turn into something that's about race. And the media played a vital, vital, incredible role um, in this, but you want to really focus on the Anti-Drug um, Abuse Act of 1986, which um, set up a disproportionate punishment for um, rock cocaine versus powder cocaine. So, um, you know, having one gram 
of rock cocaine, which was, you know, highlighted as and created as a, a black issue, right? Being the equivalent to having 100 grams of powder cocaine. Um, you know, so that's a really important thing is, is the distinction there. And that distinction was used and manipulated in the media in the, the legal system here to basically put millions of black and brown bodies into these prisons, right? And filling beds, which fills pockets, right? The whole, the whole thing there. Um, think about the role that the media played in the sensationalization of crack use as an epidemic an epidemic was it an actual epidemic or you know how was you know moral panic and demonization and you know racializing those things um uh evident here right like what role did the media play in creating you know the fact that there needed to be a war on, on drugs right um what was like the the attraction for rappers to the dealers around the hood um and how would crack culture influence the music and style, you know, um, in, in hip hop culture? So if you look at the Dapper Dan, Eric B and Rakim, um, you know, vibes and, and all that stuff, uh, you know, and, you know, what was the influence there? Cash rules, everything around me, Wu-Tang, all that stuff. So they go on the hustler's tail. Like, how does that become prominent uh, in the music? Um, be careful, buddy. Alfie, be gentle with the chickens. I get discipline, you know, in lecture at the same time, but be nice to the chicks, okay, bud? <laughs> um, yeah, but so think about the hustler story. It became so prominent, and we'll see a lot of it when we get into uh, 90s um, boom bap rap, New York City boom bap rap, but um, who are some of the hustlers turned rappers? Just pay attention to that. And what were some of the key events um, to reform... Uh, Rock cocaine laws. So I mean, we had Obama, um, you know, pass legislation that reduced the disparity from 100 to one um, to uh, 18 to one. But I mean, you still have mandatory minimum sentences for drug offenders. You know, uh, ridiculous rules like three strikes and you get a lifetime. You get a lifetime sentence. Shit like that. So just think about, you know, we're still not there. You know, we're still not there with these drug laws. You know. And again, thinking about drugs as a crime problem versus as a social problem, as a mental health and addiction problem, right? They're, we're just so light years away from that. Um, and that's kind of like the, 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 the questions that hopefully will guide your, your sense through, these film, through this film. And we listened to a bunch of, a bunch of music this week. So, um, you know, NWA Dope Man about, you know, your dope man, like who do you go to get your drugs from? Um, you know, an epic tale, uh, a critique on the system, on the drug trade by uh, Mortal Technique, looking at from all the perspectives from people who pick the coca plants to the, to the processing of the drugs, to the sale of the drugs, to the involvement of law enforcement in trafficking um, cocaine to the United States. We had, you know, West Savannah by Outkast, where they're, again, looking at the, the trade in their hood. Um, Night of the Living Bass Heads, which is a classic anti-crack, um, you know, crack is whack song by Public Enemy. Um, again, speaking out against, you know, drugs. I mean, you know, where we have um, Biggie Smalls, Ten Crack Commandments, again, about, you know, Biggie was, a, you know, a drug dealer turned rapper. Jay-Z drug dealer turned turn rapper. That's how he got his big break is that, and he got his money to get himself put on. Uh, but Biggie in Ten Crack Commandments, you know, uh, you know, never get high on your own supply. Um, but where, where he has the countdown, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the Ten Crack Commandments. It's pretty interesting. Um, that's Chuck D, a Chuck D sample from Public Enemy. It goes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you know, Chuck is very against like charging people for samples, sampling the music, but he did in that instance because he's against the glorification of, of drug abuse, drug sales, um, violence, and stuff like that. So you know, Chuck, Chuck, Chuck got his pennies off, off, off of that. Um, you know, so a lot, you know, the Pusha T song, um, Pusha T, you know, I mean, again, promoting uh, the trade. We had, um, you know, a Jizza song. 
in, in there. Um, but several of the songs, you know, go in and uh, speak out against, uh, you know, the glorification of the drug trade. We have, um, you know, Boogie Down Productions, uh, Love's Gonna Get You, a song about, you know, materialism and why people sell drugs as, you know, to make material ends and uh, all that stuff. So we have a few songs that critique it as well as glorify um, the whole the whole culture. So, um, you know, it's become a part of the music. Um, it's a part of the culture, but it's, you know, it's, it's a part of America's history, um, you know, that I think the film does a pretty decent job of, of exploring, you know, um, I mean, just think about it, like, Coca-Cola used to have cocaine in it, like, you know, it's just something that is selectively enforced, it's been, you know, the media plays a, a fundamental role in it, and how it's policed, and perception, you know, media creates the perception, they don't go and show how, you know, it's a problem in the suburbs, you know, they show how it's a problem in, 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 inner city black America versus like a problem in the burbs, you know, um, and that just creates like this whole issue, right, of perception and the, and talk about thinking back to last class, the spectacle, right, like the media grasp onto these, these fucked up things, um, like murder, violence, all this, the, the stuff that's sensationalized, you know, and they run with it, you know, so that was a, a thing that's been prominent since the 80s, but I mean, the 80s, you know, is the, is the, the, the whole crack epidemic, epidemic thing, you know, was a major, 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 um, attractant, you know, for viewers, you know, and, it, and in many ways glorified it, you know, so, um, anyways, all right, check out the film. Um, we're not going to have any post-viewing discussion. I think you can, you, you can glean enough from watching the film and understand a little bit about the relationship here um, and, and, you know, hip-hop's sort of, you know, duality when it comes to um, drugs and drug trade and, you know, the, the promotion of, the glorification of, the stories of, and also the demonization of 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 the drugs and the trade and 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 um and and the media coverage and all that. All right, so we'll check you next week um, when we we dig deeper into hip hop history and hip hop music. Real Dr. Dre, DJ Food Stamp. I'm out. Peace. Gotta go find my son. <laughs>